Hello, and welcome to A VO's Journey. My name is Anthony Pika. This show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business, sidestep all the crazy things that I seem to step on. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can speed up your audiobook voiceover work so that it doesn't take you five to seven hours to do one finished hour of audio. So if you are new to doing audiobooks or the voiceover world, or you're not new and you've been doing this for a while, uh, it is evident that getting into audiobooks, there's some really good things and some really tough things, right? The good things is there's lots of business out there, okay? There's lots of opportunities. It is still... Uh, probably one of the largest segments of the voiceover industry, just because there, you know, there are so many independent writers and things because of Audible and Amazon that you can, uh, you know, have this huge amount of constant books coming onto the market. And because it's easy to, uh, you know, have a marketplace now because of ACX and, you know, new places like we've talked about on the channel um, that uh, like Ahab Talent and Find A Way Voices and all kinds of different things, it's easier to turn those books into audio books. So, you know, that's, that's where the good thing is that there's lots of business. The hard thing, especially for voice actors, is dealing with the fact that it takes a lot of work to do an audiobook, and it pays uh, not always very good, meaning like, you know, it can pay decently per hour if you charge the right amount of money. But it gets difficult when you look at other segments of the voiceover industry and, you know, someone's making, you know, three, uh, let's say someone makes $200 for a 30 second voiceover and then you're making $200 for an um, an hour of finished audio and then but it takes you five or six hours of actual work to do that. So if you take five hours, you know, and divide that, you know, by... um, you take 200 and divide that by five, right? I think you got something like, what is that? Um, four, uh, f- what it, I, I, my math is failing me here. So you probably like 50, 100, 200, that would be four. So something less, you know, something around 40. What is it? 80, 160. Yeah. So 40. So like $40 an hour as opposed to $200 an hour. But the difference is the amount of jobs that you get at, you know, for the the $200 for 30 second audio, as opposed to the $200 uh, a finished hour for audiobooks, there's going to be different because there's going to be a lot more for the audiobooks. But that's not what I wanted to talk about in this session about uh, how much work there is, but more about how you can speed up your audiobooks so that you could turn that $40 an hour into $60 or $80 or even $100. All right. Um, So, Basically, when I started doing voiceover, uh, I started with audiobooks. It was the easiest point of entry for me. You know, I wasn't represented. I didn't know what I was doing. I had my hobo for it and a $40 microphone, and I thought it'd be cool to be an audiobook narrator. So I, I found this the site called ACX, and I started working on it and auditioning like crazy. And, uh, you know, I started realizing some things real quick. As I started getting book deals, uh, audiobook deals, you know, through the site, I realized that This took a long time, all right? And the first thing I realized is that one thing that caused me to take a lot more time is my reading out loud skills. This was something that, you know, I personally thought it was not a big deal. I thought that I would be perfectly fine. I was a teacher. I was, I've was. i been an actor uh, for years and years. I've always spoke out loud in front of crowds. But what I realized was is I'd actually never um, spoken using a script that I hadn't memorized or that I wasn't improving. Does that make sense? So I wasn't used to actually taking a script, reading it out loud in a convincing manner that I had only seen once and making it sound like it was something that I knew what I was talking about, I could perform while I was reading it, and and that I could do it without constantly screwing up. I learned a lot about myself and my skills at that point. So that was the first thing that I had to really do was get used to reading out loud in front of a microphone um, without memorizing a script, without you know reading it three or four times. Because let's be honest, you get a book 
and it's you know 50,000 words long or 100,000 words long, you're not going to read that thing a couple of times. And as we are working voice actors, and especially a lot of us who are working a job, a full-time job or a part-time job or a couple and then trying to do this on the side, we don't have time to just read novels and then narrate them and, you know, have a good – we don't have that time. Um, so, you know, that was, that was a big thing for me. So what I had to do is I had to really work hard to read ahead while I was reading. And this was very uncomfortable for me uh, at first. It took me a while. But as I did that more and more and forced myself to read ahead while I was reading, uh, eventually I got better at reading out loud. So that's the really first thing that you need to focus on is, you know, making less mistakes while you're reading. That's a big one. Um, Okay, so that's really the first one. Practicing the reading out loud, getting yourself to where you can read without constantly stopping. Right. If you're stopping every other sentence, you know, you got to work on it. It has nothing to do with your education or you, you can't read well or something like that. I mean, it just ha- it could be that you just not, you know, ever really focused on doing that. Um, so that was a shock to me because I, I thought I'd be a lot better at it, but I wasn't. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is I found a lot of ways, you know, so we, we get through the book. Understanding the formatting and everything, that's one thing. So you have to learn that. But once you get through reading... Then you have to go back and edit. And the editing process usually takes the most time. So here's kind of a breakdown. If it's an hour of finished audio, your ultimate goal, in my opinion, right, should be to be able to finish an hour of finished audio uh, in under three hours. Okay, that means editing and reading. Okay, so that means that if you're reading an hour of audio, an actual, the, the reading of it, you don't want that to take more than an hour. You want it to take like it shouldn't take an hour or it shouldn't take two hours to read one hour, although that's very common. And that's actually very good to be only, you know, only able to take, um, uh, you know, two hours to read one hour. But the goal would be for you to do that no longer than two hours. But then the editing process comes in. And here's where I found that I made the biggest changes. What most people do is they read through and they continue to read. And if they make a mistake, you know, they keep recording. They'll just stop. They use like a clicker. They use a snap. They clap their hands. They do, you know, they, they do it a couple times until they get it right and they keep going. Do you know what I mean? Like they don't stop. They don't edit out that stuff. They do that on the back end. So that when you go back to edit it, when you're done recording that hour or whatever, you have to go back and listen to the whole thing from beginning to end and edit out each particular place. And it takes a long time as opposed to going back and listening to listening through it once. Right. Just to make sure that everything is, uh, you know, in, in, in correct order, but not having to take stuff out. So what I realized, I tried everything. I tried the dog clickers. I tried clapping hands. I tried snapping. I tried just to keep recording. And if I screwed up, take a, a, a brief pause and then continue on, you know, go, you know, continue on with a sentence so that I could just go back and edit it. I tried it all. And what I found was. The best thing for me, and and I think I did this because I didn't know what I was doing when I started. The best thing for me uh, was uh, when I started, I began to, uh, when I screwed up like a sentence in the middle of a sentence, I stopped right there. I went back to the beginning of that sentence and I started recording that sentence over again. Okay. And then kept going so that I erased the mistake Right while I was doing it, right, I erased the mistake and then kept going. So I modified what we call in the industry the punch and roll, right, which the idea of the punch and roll is that when you record something and you make a mistake, right, you go back to where the mistake was, you punch in. I mean, it's an old saying based on, you know, when there was we used tape and stuff. But, you know, you you punch in where you are and then, you know, you record and it gives you an idea of what you were sounding like before. It's 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 a great way to, you know, make sure, you know, you, you get the right feel for the audio by hearing yourself and everything like this. And but I was doing I modified it to do it right away. Does that make sense? So what I did was instead of waiting to the end or after I was done recording everything, if I was talking and I made a mistake, I would stop, go back to that. And I still do it to this day even with my audio right now, like even with my audio and voiceovers, short voiceovers, if I mess up, I stop and I go back 
and I fix it right then and there. I don't wait till I'm done to go back and fix it on the back end. And the reason why I found is that if I do that, it takes me a lot more time because if I have to go back and fix that, likelihood is I'll have to go back and record more. It'll take me more time to figure out which one I'm using, uh, which one sounds better. I might have to go back in the booth again. Like there's just a lot of different things that end up happening. So and on top of that, I got to make sure I sound right, right? So if I have to go back and re-record again, so when you're right in the heat of it and you're doing it, it's it, you sound right. It, it doesn't sound different if you record over it right away as opposed to waiting until you've recorded everything and then having to go back, okay? So that, that was a big change in what I did, and it took off hours of work, okay? Now, there have been moments where I messed up so much that it was very hard to get a feel for the book. Like I just felt like I wasn't getting anything done, in which case I realized that I needed to work on being able to read continuously without screwing up. You know, that's a big, so so those things go to uh, hand in hand. There does come a point where it is all, it is, it, it comes back on your shoulders about how well can you read, how well can you put in a performance, you know, and this takes time. This took me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. It took me probably a year and a half to two years to get comfortable with this. And I think that's the last thing. This takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. You're not going to be able to just, you know, wake up the next day and, and be some super fast audiobook narrator. But it can happen that you can really shave off a lot of time. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, going from six hours to three hours is a massive difference, right? Because that's going from, you know, uh, if you, you know, it's going from $50 to $100 an hour, right? I mean, it's a big, like, you you know, you think about the doubling or tripling something of the time you save, all right? That's a big one to me. So these tips and everything, I think, will help you at, at least to be aware of what's going on. And the last thing I'm going to give you a little bonus, and then I'm going to let you go, is that, um, you know, a lot of professionals and more um, and more even even more beginners and stuff have realized that the access to editors, OK, people who take the audio, edit it. I do it myself. I take people's like right after I'm done here, I have a client that I'm going to format their work for ACX. And basically they record the work, send it to me and I fix it up, make it all shiny, send it back to them and it's all done. And they pay me uh, a small amount, you know, per finished hour, even though it doesn't take me that much because, you know, I'm going through it using my presets and everything like that. But I have all that built because I've done so much work. Point I'm trying to make is a lot of the professionals that you see pumping out a book or two books a week, all right, of, of long books, you know, like hundreds, 150,000 words or things like this, uh, they are used, they use editors, you know, and there's other people, you know, it doesn't have to be those people, it can be anybody who can use the uh, either individuals like myself or companies, right, that do this work where you send it to them studios and they will go through, they will edit it. Some will create punch lists, which means they will go through and read this, watch the script and see if you screwed up. And then they'll put that in a punch list, which they send a list back to you with this, like the what you screwed up on, the time, like the timestamp. That's important because you need to know where the timestamp is. And, uh, you know, they send it back to you, you fix that. And, you know, now that usually comes with, a, again, a per finished hour price. And what a lot of people do is they add that price. Like if it's 60, if it's like $40 or $60 extra finished hour. So if you were charging, you know, $150 a finished hour, you would then charge, you know, like $200 a finished hour if you were, you know, paying your person $50, you know, a finished hour of work. So like this is this is just something that's a little bonus, like an extra bonus for you to think about that if you want to let Leverage that yourself and realize that it's taking you quadruple the amount of time, which it usually does, to go back afterwards and edit. You might look at services like that. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, so, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. As always, uh, super excited. We are on Thursday. Tomorrow is Fiverr Friday. So we'll see you then. And as always, head over to aviosjourney.com. Uh, if you're looking at growing your voiceover business, you need some uh, tips on all kinds of different ways to get more. Uh, more business. That's a great place to go. And I hope to see you soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.